is what happened. The Lord asked me what I wanted to preach on. And so I told him what I wanted to preach on. He said, sounds good. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to teach you again how to produce joy in your life. Everybody say liberty. Liberty. Freedom. Freedom. Now say joy. Joy. What kind of joy? I'm looking for joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm going to teach you some things, even if I've taught you before, but there's a whole lot of new folks at our church that you have not really received the fullness of the joy of the Lord, and you need the joy of the Lord. I heard one preacher one time say, oh, that joy and laughter stuff, that's all done away with, and it's immature. It's just immature. It's kind of like the lowest form. Um, That's kind of like the lowest form of the glory of God, and we need to get past it. Well, I'm going to give you some scripture to tell whoever said that was just as crazy as uh, whatever. Because uh, the last time I looked, um, it's really a part of who God is. You can't be in faith without it. It's a sign of your faith. Uh, If you walk in the Spirit, it's a sign of your uh, walking in the Spirit. The Bible says, he who sits in the heavens laughs. Amen. It's a part of healing. Laughter does good like a medicine. It's the end of your faith. You rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory, receiving the end. So joy is everywhere. And so, you know, um, and this is the truth. Uh, People who are not full of the joy of the Lord are weak. They're weak. They're weak in spirit, they're weak in their soul, and therefore they're usually crazy in their body. Because the Bible says in Nehemiah 1.8, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And you see, when you've got strength, hallelujah, and the strength and joy go together. The strength of God and the joy of God go together. The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew. That word renew is exchange their strength. So a person that's not full of joy who is, who is you know, um, aren't you, you know, as a Christian, and I have to watch this too because I got a lot going on and I can get real serious with it. I can get real serious, uh, you know, about things that need to be done. And, and you can still be full of joy and serious at the same time. But serious does not mean overwhelmed, weighted down. You know, it's like this, people, uh, I heard, uh, I think Brother Hagen was talking about it. He was talking about people who prayed all the time. And he said, uh, a lot of times people say in intercession, you know, someone's always just intense and even a little bit sad and a little bit, you know, irritable. And, and they say, well, I'm just a prayer. You know, I'm always interceding. And so I've always got a heavy burden. And he said, that's just not the case. Because if you're a true prayer, you can pray, you pray through to victory. If you're a true intercessor, you pray till you get victory or a note of victory. Amen. So if you've been in the presence of God any length of time, you're going to come out rejoicing, full of joy. Everybody say, the joy of the Lord. Lord. It is my strength. Amen. So he asked me what I wanted to preach on, and I want to preach on joy. So I'm, I'm fixing to have some tonight. And you can either come with me or sit in your seat and do nothing, but we're going to do some things tonight. So this is an interactive service. So I'm going to preach to you a little bit, and then we're going to do, because of this morning, what do we find out? That if you don't do it, you can't have it. If you do it, you build your house on a rock. So we're going to preach a little bit, and then we're going to do a little bit. Then I'm going to preach a little more, and then we're going to do a little more. Are you ready? Because I'm tired of y'all just sitting out there looking at me. We're going to do some stuff tonight. All right? And this is saturation meaning, so anything goes within the limits of the Word of God here. All right. Hallelujah. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number 16. Jeremiah 15, 16. I didn't give them my notes because I wasn't sure where we were going totally. And uh, so um, they may not get it up on the screen, but they might. Jeremiah 15, 16 says this. Thy words were found. I did eat them. I took them in, and your word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. John 15, 11. John 15, 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be what? What does full mean? I'm living in the overflow. By the way, that's the song I want at the end. Um, So, number one, I found his word. What did I do with it? 
How many Bible uh, Institute graduates do we have in this room? How many, cur- keep your hands up. How many of you are currently in Bible Institute? How many of you go to this church? How many of you love Jesus? How many of you have ever read any portion of the scripture at all in your life? How many of you will not raise your hand if Jesus himself asks you? I'm trying to tell you this is for everybody in the room. You have the word of God. If you've got one scripture in you, these things have I spoken unto you. The, the word of God, Jesus spoke it to you. That your joy, that my joy, whose joy? His joy. Might remain in you and your joy might be or to overflowing. So my point is, especially if you've been through Bible Institute, I've given you, we've given you 24 classes, seven hours And you ought to be in the word. If you've been in this church six months, if you've been in this church one month, if you were here this morning, (laughs) you got some word. Amen. But one of the things you got to do is when you read the word, when you, um, I'm sure you all read my daily bread very faithfully because I really work hard on it. And I know that you all read it every day. Praise the Lord. And so, you know, I don't do that for my health. I do that for yours. Praise the Lord. Okay. And so, I really am honorary. What did, what did you do? Did you do this to me? Um, who prayed? And so, anyway, I even snorted. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's wild up in here. So, <laughs> I found your word. I did eat it. It's the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Jesus said, I spoke to you my word. And when you find it and when you take it in, it'll produce joy till it overflows. Have you found any of his word? Do you have any word in you at all? Well, stand up. I mean it, stand up. I want you to ignite the word that's on the inside. Now, all you word people. You ought to go ballistic about right now because if you really are full of the word, you see, that stuff is not just meant to sit in you. That's not meant to tickle your ears. That's meant to lead your life. And when you've got any portion of the word of God, if all you've got is John three sixteen, you ought to be happy about it. Amen. I, 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 I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. If you're, if this is how you ignite the word of God on the inside of you. Amen. I found your word. It's the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. You are the word made flesh and you dwell in me. Thank you for your word. It's the joy. It's the joy. It's the joy. It's the joy joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you can get specific with it. What do you need? What do you need? Do you need healing in your body? Then you can rejoice over 1 Peter 2, 24. Do you have a financial need? Then you can rejoice over Philippians 4, 19. Do you you need peace? Jesus said, my peace I leave you. You can rejoice over that. Come on, what do you need? If you're single and you want to be married, uh, he, he, you know, he, he finds a wife, finds a good thing. Listen, listen, you can rejoice over everything. But I want you to pick one thing particular you're going through. We know someone wants something. Hallelujah. (laughs) Listen, you pick what you need. Come on, a scripture will pop up. I want you to rejoice over that one thing right now. Come on, I, I, I mean it. I want you to rejoice. I want you to rejoice. I want you to rejoice. Hallelujah. I want you to rejoice. I want you to rejoice over the promise of God. That's yes and amen. It's yes and amen. It's so be it. It's the amen. You can have it. You believe it. You can have it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right, sit down. All right, sit down. That that was the salad. Hallelujah. All right, let's move on. So... When you get in faith 
And when you believe something, it produces joy. John 16, 24. John's gospel, 16, 24. It says, hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you'll receive. It seems as though God can do nothing unless somebody on the earth asks. Seems he's limited by our prayer life or our faith life. Even though the promises are there, legally you still need to ask. Because Jesus said so. He said to ask. Yes, I know. He knows the things you need before you ask, but you still got to ask. It's a, it's a legal thing. I like John Wesley. He said it seems as though God can do nothing unless a man on earth asks. So what it says, ask. Uh, so ask in his name and you'll do what? You'll receive. How many times? All the time. Why? That your joy may be full. So if you really believe in God for something, that it, there's going to be a joy. You don't have to put it on because you believe something, joy is produced. Because you believe something, before you see it, before you feel it, you, you, there's a joy that comes up from the inside because there's a surety down there that you've got it. And so there's joy. Everybody say joy. joy. Come on, say I believe. And then Acts 27, 25, we looked at this one this morning. But uh, the Apostle Paul said when he was on the ship in the middle of all that mess, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Everybody say, cheer up. Cheer up. Now, I know you can be going through, listen to me. I've been through some stuff in my little short years. You have too, right? But, and yes, you know, when, when something happens and there might be some tears for a minute or two. But if you want to get out of it, you're going to have to get alone with God and get in faith. Amen? And then <laughs> sometimes the people you hang out with, you know, they're trying to pull you down. How many know it's easier to pull someone down to pull, than pull somebody up? But you know what? You need to get good at telling this to people. I know. Don't people just love it? You know, when people are going through big things... They want you to worry with them. Now, I know this, and, and, and she's in heaven. I don't want to talk mean about her. But my mamaw was a world champion worrier. And she taught us all to worry. And she was of the persuasion, if you're not worrying with me, you don't care about me. Amen. I've had people ask me, aren't you worried about that? Nope. And sometimes it looks callous. But you don't really need me to worry with you. It's not the proof of I care. It's not the proof that you care. But when you believe something, what? He said, cheer up. Come on. Gently nudge your neighbor and tell him to cheer up. <laughs> why, can we, why can we cheer up? Because I believe God. Because I believe God. It'll be just like it was told me. <laughs> It'll be just like it was told me. <laughs> It'll be just like it was told me. We're almost there. It'll ju just be like it was told me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. Because I believe God. Do you believe God? I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. It's impossible for him to lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Has he not said it? Will he not also do it? There will be a performance of the things that he promised you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> there will be. Has he not said it? Will he not also do it? 
Hallelujah. Has he not said it? Will he not make it good? How, there will be. Just like he told, yeah, just like he prophesied through Elizabeth to Mary, there shall be, there shall be, there shall be a performance of the things that were spoken to you of the Lord. Hallelujah. There shall be, it 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 shall be, just like he said, just like he said. And so when you believe that, you can rejoice. You can rejoice, you can rejoice, you can rejoice, you can rejoice. Hallelujah. That, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. Come on, we need to remind ourselves. God is God, and he will not let you down. He has not changed his mind about you. He will do it. Has he not said it? Will he not also do it? He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why wouldn't we just cheer up? Why wouldn't we just cheer up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your children are coming back to the Lord. You ought to cheer up. Your children are coming back to God. You ought to cheer up. Your children are going to serve God. You ought to cheer up. 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 Hallelujah. You ought to cheer up. You ought to cheer up. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Y'all cheer up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what you so happy about? Because I believe God. Because I believe God. Because I believe God. Because I believe God. Woo. Cheer up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then a scripture that I'm known for is 1 Peter 1.8. Whom having not seen, you love. And whom though you see him not, yet you believe. And you rejoice with joy. <laughs> Woo. You rejoice with joy, unspeakable, and, 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. <sighs> uh, <laughs> whom having not seen, you love. Y'all love Jesus? In whom, though now you see him not, yet believing. Everybody shout, 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 shout. <laughs> shout, I believe. And because you believe, what do you do? You rejoice with what, though? You rejoice with joy. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. No. When you really believe something, it's down in you. <laughs> and you really believe something. When you really believe. When you really believe. When you're really in expectation. There's a joy that's produced from your spirit that if you'll let it will work up to your soul and even get on your body. It come, um, yeah, that's right. It, uh, it comes up. It comes up. There is a well with joy, with joy, 
come on, the, what is it? With joy, I'll draw up salvation, that everlasting, with joy, even your salvation, even the things that are promised to you of God. If you can get joy working, how does joy work? You find his word, you eat it. It's the joy and the rejoicing of your soul. You, you, you ask of him, you ask of him, and then you believe it, and then it's joy to you. And then what? You believe what he said, and then you begin to rejoice. With joy. You begin to rejoice with joy. If it's unspeakable, it might come out a little different. Now, I know those of you who don't think this is your personality. But sometimes your personality will keep you out of the things of God. Amen. Now, there are some people that are just wild and crazy and they'll just do anything at a drop of a hat. That's fine. But those are those of us, and you don't believe this because you don't really know me, but the old me, thank God he's dead, but the old me would not stand up and do any of this right now. I surely wouldn't stand up and yield to the Holy Ghost and laugh in front of you and roll around and run around the room. I wouldn't do any of that because that's embarrassing. But I've gotten so much over what you think about me, I just don't really give a flying flip. Especially when I'm under the anointing, it's a whole lot easier. But a lot of times, it's your flesh that needs this the most. And so if you'll yield to the Holy Ghost, he'll pick you up by the nap of the neck and he'll run you around the room. What is that? He's telling you to get over yourself. It's a good way to release your faith. Um, but joy, and so what's it, if it's unspeakable, I have joy, I have joy. I have, no, it's not what it is. If it's unspeakable, how does it show up? Well, it might show up in laughter. Just try this. Ha, ha, ha. That's nice. God likes it. He who sits in the heavens laughs. You just be, you just be joining him. You just be joining him. Ooh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I understand. You know, we all get there every now and again. But you can't join him in heaven like that. You just can't. There, how, how, come on. We can get everybody who's in the body of Christ to believe that. How many believe there's no crying in heaven? Right? There is emotion, though. There's worship. And I guarantee you there's going to be a whole lot of joy. You may have to go to my laughing class when you get to heaven. You have the opportunity right now to be in it. And you can bypass my class in heaven and maybe have one of your own. There's not going to be classes in heaven. Oh, I disagree with you. There are so many people so far behind. That when they get there, they're, they're going to they're gonna like, what in the world? You know, we don't quit, cease to be in us. You're an eternal learner. Even when you get to heaven, you're going to look at God and go, What? Wow. Come on. If you believe something, you should rejoice with joy. So how do you get that? Well, you just tap down on the inside because that's where joy lives. And you make it show up. And, you know, just like you can sing on purpose, whether you're good or bad. You know, everybody can't be a mic singer here. You understand? But that doesn't mean you can't be a rejoicer. It doesn't mean you can't be a rejoicer. And so you need to get good at it. I've just learned how to do this. Sometimes when I feel it the least, ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. And sometimes I even sing a little ha, ha song. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Hi, ho, hi, ho. It's off. Now, ha, ha. Ha, ha. I just... I'll laugh on purpose. And it's good. And then there'll be times when the Holy Ghost, like he does, he's doing with me right now, he'll take a hold with me. Because he knows you need to laugh. He knows you need to get over some stuff. And one of the things that'll mess with the devil who's been trying to mess with you the most is when he's thrown his best shot and all you got to do is laugh. I mean, what's after, th I mean, what, what's after that? I, I, I threw my best punch and they're laughing at me. I, I, I tried my best thing, and they're laughing at me. At famine 
and destruction, I will laugh. That's scripture. It's not at famine and destruction, I'll cry and call the prayer tower and see if I can get somebody to help me out of this mess. At famine and destruction, I will laugh. Why? Because I found his word. I did eat it. It's the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Um, I'm in the middle of something. So I went away like the apostle Paul, right in the middle of the ship. And I got into the presence of God. Amen. So do you believe something? Okay, stand back up then. Let's prove it. Oh, it's like that church I went to that one time I was trying to date that girl. They were up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a long, long time ago. Hallelujah. It's high school all over again. Anyway, so, but I don't know, y'all. Just pray for me. Hallelujah. I don't know what's up. <clears throat> yeah, I do know what's up. Come on. Sometimes you just need to have some liberty. You just need to have some freedom. You just need to be not uptight. Come on, saturation meeting. It's time, not to, it's time to loosen up. Let it go. Make the devil scratch his head and say, what in the world? So do you believe something? What do you, what do you believe in? What, what is the thing the most right now that you're believing for? What, what, are, you, what are you working on? What are you working on? Now, if you're not working on anything personal, I got some things you can work on. And seriously, if you don't have anything personal, you can rejoice over with me that there's an awning on the outside of this church on that side that's fully paid for. And then if you really pass that, then you can rejoice with me that this, all this, this stuff is all paid off. Because we got a bigger building to build. I don't really want to talk about it. But um, we do. Hallelujah. We do. We got one more. We got one more. So if you don't got anything personal, you can help me. Because in our house, Pastor Rhonda's always getting on me. She's like, you always make me deal with all our stuff because you're too busy dealing with all the church stuff. And it's true. But she can handle it. <laughs> Hallelujah. What do you believe in? I want you to get one thing you're believing over. And I want you to look at it, because I know you've done this many times, but I want you to look at it, and I want you to rejoice with joy over it. <laughs> I want you <laughs> to see it done. And I want you to get so flat full of joy about it. <laughs> and you can't do that just going, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You want me to put it on? I absolutely want you to put it on. I, I, I want you to put on the garment of praise. I want you to put it on. I want you to put it on. I want you to get, come on. Huh? I rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. If you really believe it, if you really believe it, if you really believe it, believe it. <laughs> if you really believe it, then you can see it. If you really believe it, you can see it. If you really believe it, you can see it. And if you can see it, you can seize it. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Have a seat. Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you'll not fulfill the lust of your flesh. And then you know in Galatians 5, 22, one of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. So when you walk in the Spirit, it'll produce joy in your life. Listen, you don't have to try... Yes, you do put it on. Yes, you do cooperate with it. But 
if you'll do these things, if you'll find the word, if you'll believe God, and if you'll walk in the spirit, joy will be right there. Amen. Come on, as a believer, and, 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 and I'm telling you this, I implore you, the hour we live in, when there's so much disturbance on the outside, when there's so many people mad at one another, picking sides, uh, vicious, mean. If, if in the middle of that, you're like, hi, <laughs> hello, I love Jesus, and I like you. You don't have to agree with me. I love you. Jesus loves you. You want to laugh with me? Ha, ha, ha. I mean, just be full of joy. It radiates. It's the light in the life of God. It's the light in the life of God. Come on, can you imagine a depressed Jesus? Can you imagine a depressed Jesus? He was never depressed. He was never worried. Oh, yeah, Pastor Mark, but, you know, he sweat as it were, great drops of blood. Well, if you were about to be separated from the Father and take on every sin of all humanity. But he didn't get depressed over it. He sweat as it were, great drops of blood over it, but he didn't get depressed over it. How do I know that? For the joy set before him. He endured the cross. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's not shallow. It's not low-level glory. It's a part of who he is. It's a part of who he is. If someone thinks that joy is not important, I just wouldn't hang with them. Because I don't want what they got. I want to hang with Jesus, <laughs> full of joy. You know, and I don't know why he chose to do it this way. He could have just said, um, if you believe in me, it brings peace. And that's part of it too. But he threw this in because he knew you were going to live on this planet. And I, my big brother in the faith said, he believed this life was never meant to go through sober. Now, if you don't know scripture, you might, what? <laughs> Wine for everybody. No, that's not what he meant. Be not drunk with wine, where is the excess? But be filled with the whole, be being filled with the Holy Ghost. How? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Making melody, a joyful melody. I think one translation says making a joyful melody in your heart. Amen. So we find the word. We eat it. We believe something. We walk in the spirit. And then Psalm 1611. Let's concentrate on this one a minute. Thou wilt show me. Psalm 1611, thou will show me the path of life in your presence. Now listen, you want to get in the presence of God? You're going to come out a certain way. In your presence, I feel the burdens of this life because I've picked them up from Jesus. No, in your presence is what? Not just halfway, not just a little bit. How much? Joy. Of what? Joy. Ha, ha, ha. At thy right hand, where are you seated? In Christ. We're seated at the right hand of God in Christ. So where are you seated? At the right hand. At the right hand, there are pleasures. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. So you show me someone who's been in the presence of God, and I'll show you a flat, happy person. <laughs> happy is not a good word. Joyful person. Because happiness really tends to do with earthly things. You can be happy one day and sad the next. But when you have joy, joy has happiness in it, but it's not worldly. Because it's not persuaded by what it sees or feels. But when you get in the presence of God... You should be happy, full of joy. You should be bouncing around like a ping pong ball. I mean, you should just be, I mean, everybody should want to be around you. Because you've got something on you that's just light and liberty and the love of God. And you're just full of joy. 
And those pearly white teeth that you pay a lot of money for to brighten up, I mean, everybody can see them all the time because you're just happy. You're not scowling in the middle of anything. You're just happy. I'm preaching to myself just like I am of you. I can let the weight of things get on me. I can let the weight of this church get on me. The Apostle Paul said, uh, you know, that he had to be careful of the weight of all the churches. He had way more than I did, but it can get on you. It can get on you. So just like your job can get on you, the weight of it, this job can get on me. Because it's not just me showing up on Sunday morning. Y'all realize that, right? I do other stuff. I don't like play golf or putt-putt or anything. I don't, I don't even know. I've never hit a hole in one because I've never. I went golfing one time with my dad. He got me a set of golf clubs. He was just sure we were going to have some time together in the golf club course. And I went out one time and uh, I hit it a couple times. And I about took that, that what do you call that, that stick? <laughs> the club. I, I wanted to wrap it around a tree so bad. Because I thought, this is the stupidest thing. I just go back to playing putt-putt. Um, and so that's what I did the rest of the time. I just dropped my ball on the green, and I just putt. Because I didn't want to do anything else anymore. You understand? I got stuff to do, and the heaviness can get on me too. And um, I don't like it when it does. But I do know how to get it off. I do know how to get it off. Um, my wife tells me, when, you can tell me, you know, like, when you, have, you know, if you're married to someone, you can give them some help every once in a while. Just say little things, nice things like this. Go be with Jesus. <laughs> Go be with Jesus. I, I hear Jesus calling you. <laughs> I heard him. I think he's in, I think he's in the bedroom. <laughs> go, go in there. <laughs> Come out later. Hallelujah. Jesus. In his presence is fullness of joy. Now, if you're here Wednesday night, I taught you how to get in the presence of God. Hebrews 13, 15, by him, by the Holy Ghost, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. When you begin to worship him with your words and take worship in spirit and truth, you give that back, then his presence comes. And when you can get bold, go, come boldly to the throne room of grace, you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, you're a new creature, you have free access into the throne room of God where you can obtain mercy and grace. You can come in boldly because you're a child of the most high God. Not under guilt, not under condemnation, but come boldly. The righteous are bold as a lion. And you can get into his very presence. Listen, you need to get familiar with the holy of holies now while you're on, here on earth. It's a, it's a real place that you can go to, but you don't have to wait till you get to heaven. You can enter in right now because you're washed in the blood, because you're clean. And you go in there and you obtain mercy and grace. But that presence, so be good at getting to his presence. Be, you, you don't have to come to church just to get in his presence. You can get in his presence in your car. You can get in his presence in your house. You ought to be able to. You can get in your, his presence in your cubicle at work. You can get into his presence while you're washing dishes, mowing the lawn. You, you can get into his presence anywhere, anytime. How? By the words of your mouth, by worshiping him. And when his presence come, <laughs> joy in your, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We ought to be enjoying this walk with God. Come on. You're a peculiar, set-apart people. People ought to want to know, how is it that you're unshaken? How is it that, that nothing rattles you? How is it you can be in the middle of the biggest storm and you're telling all of us to cheer up? How, how is that possible? Because I found his word and I did eat it. And it's the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. Amen. I believe something. I believe it. And because I believe it, it produces joy unspeakable and full of glory in me. And when I walk in his presence, when I walk in his spirit, this joy that's on the inside of him, that's a fruit of the spirit, appears in my life. And when I learn how to worship him, when I spend my day, when I spend my day, when I spend my day in his presence, you know, you don't have to come in and out. You can just live there. Yes. Aware of him. Yes. All the time. You can be aware of him all the time. Yes, he wants you to have those moments like we're having right now. But he wants you to be aware of him morning, noon, and night. 
And, and you can, and, and it just doesn't take hours to get in his presence. It just takes a millisecond. It just takes you opening your mouth and beginning to worship him and speak the word. Amen. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are ple- pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Are you ready for dessert? Here we go. I'm going to read you some scriptures. So that's how you get into God's presence. But I want to just take one part of that, and we're going to do this. Psalms 5:11 through 12. Psalms 5:11 through 12. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Do you trust him? Yes. Then what should you do? Rejoice. All those that put their trust in him rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy. Do you believe God defends you? Yes. <laughs> He ain't going to let nothing happen to his children. You're his baby. I mean, I protect my baby like crazy, even though she's old now. Older. She's not old. She's 20. But I'd, I protect her. But even more than that, God protects you. One time I was praying for her, and I was asking the Lord to protect her. And you know what he said to me? He's like, she's my daughter, too. It's like, oh, you're right. All right. (laughs) For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will compass him as a shield. So if you put your trust in him, what should you do? Rejoice. Rejoice. If you put your trust in him, what should you do? And you should ever shout for what? Okay. We're just warming up. Psalms 28, 7. Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts him. And I am helped. I love that. My heart trusts him. And I'm helped. My heart trusts him. And I'm helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song will I praise him. Because I trust him, I'm helped. And therefore, I greatly rejoice. Every time we'd have a move of God, Brother Hagin would always do this one in the middle of when people were rejoicing. And I love this Psalms, Psalms 126, 1 through 3. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, come on, even the heathen, those who don't believe, the unrighteous, they're going to say, you know what they're going to start saying about you? The Lord has done great things for them. (laughs) And we'll say, yeah, the Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are. The Lord has done great things for us. If, If all you is is saved, the Lord has done. Come on, if you're not going to hell. The Lord has. Come on. And then if you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, if you've ever been healed, hallelujah, if he's ever provided for you, if he's ever spared your life, hallelujah, (laughs) the Lord has done. (laughs) The Lord has done. The Lord has done. The Lord has done. done. Hallelujah. (laughs) If the Lord has brought you a long way, baby, because you can look back and see where you were. (laughs) I drove to Alabama, not with a banjo on my knee, but in a broke down car with holes in my shoes, with $900 and a promise. And when it first started, you weren't here, and I did a lot of laughing. I did a lot of rejoicing. Because I knew he wasn't a man that he should lie. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have moved me to Alabama if he wasn't going to do what he said he was going to do. And it took a whole lot longer than I thought it was going to be. And sometimes you can't judge by what you see and what you feel. You just got to keep doing 
and so one time the Lord told me, I don't remember, I don't know where, I don't think we were in this building. I think we might have been in this building. I was up here. I don't remember what it was. But he told me laughter was my cross to bear. That's kind of strange, isn't it? But you see, my personality is not to get up in front of you and... <laughs> It's just not my personality. But I got rid of him. And I can rejoice with the best of them. I can run with the best of them. I can dance with, I can roll around with the best of them. I can also get on my face and pray with the best of them. I can be quiet with the best of them. There are many sides to the glory of God. There are many sides to the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. This is just one of them. It is the one I am the most familiar with. I like the rest of them too, but I just like this one the bestest. That's why he asked me what I want to preach on, and I said this, and he said good. So you can't leave until you laugh. But we're not ready to leave. Hallelujah. We were like them, we were like them that dreamed. Our mouth was filled with laughter. Our tongue was singing. The heathen said, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Everybody shout, I'm glad. I'm glad. Hallelujah. Y'all still believe double's available? Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. I believe it too. So we're going to end with this. And then we're going to do stuff. What, you ask? I don't know. Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he's anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to clap, uh, proclaim liberty to the captives, to open the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint in them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Everybody say, I got the oil of joy. I got the oil of joy. Hallelujah. The garment of praise. Come on. You got your garment on? The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Amen. So what glorifies the Lord? That you show beauty. That you have a garment of praise. That you have the oil of joy. Listen, verse 4. And this is us. And they shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities. The desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The son of the alien shall be your plowman and your vine dresser. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame. For your shame. Whenever the devil tried to do anything to you, tried to kill you, tried to mess you up, tried to take your children, tried to break your marriage up, tried to destroy your business, tried to do this, tried to do that, for your shame, you will have the double. For confusion, they shall rejoice, 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 they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess. They possess. They'll possess. They'll possess. God made us a promise. God made us a promise. Last year, double jubilee. And he said, going into this year. And I know it's getting late in this year again. But he promised us that that double, that jubilee would keep on moving. Amen. And so if you doubled last year, maybe you should just double again this year. For your shame. <laughs> For your pain. <laughs> it's time for you to possess the double. It's part of the right of the firstborn. It's part of what Jesus got for you in his death, burial, and resurrection. It's part of the right of the firstborn, a double inheritance. Amen? For your shame, for your pain. It's time. You got to do what, though? You got to possess it. You got to believe for it. Oh, come on. We're not done yet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy. 
everlasting joy. So while I'm getting my double, I'm going to rejoice with joy. <laughs> while I'm getting my, how I bring the double in, I'm just going to rejoice with joy. Hey, hey if, I, least, if I don't feel like dancing, at least I'm going to get up on my toes. Amen. If I don't feel like swaying, I'm, I'm going to move a little bit. Amen. If I don't feel like shouting, I'm at least going to raise my voice a little bit. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm going to get in. I'm going to get in. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice with joy. I'm going to possess the double. Amen. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I got it. I got it. I'm walking in double. I'm walking in double. I'm walking in double. I'm walking in double. Ha, 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 ha. I rejoice in my inheritance. Hallelujah. I got a garment of praise on. Hallelujah. I've got the oil of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've got a promise from the word of God. Hallelujah. Has he not said it? Will he not also do it? Hallelujah. Has he not said it? Will he not also do it? He made me a promise. He's not a man that he should lie. There will be a performance of what he promised me. Amen. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice.